Hello and welcome to The Rundown, the show where we keep you informed of what's hip, what's happening, and what's going on in the industry. In this particular episode, we'll be focusing on two different topics of business. One is club promotions. You've seen clubs and movies, and most of you have gone to them during the weekends. Now we'll give you an expose on how nightclubs are run. We will learn how promoters book act and what it's like to be part of the Hollywood scene. Before we begin, we'll take a small break. Stay tuned. We'll be back. with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Well, I was 10 when I first got involved with drugs. I skipped school because, you know, nobody cared. I, mean, I was on drugs and my mom didn't really care because she was on drugs. She was never home. I was in eighth grade for like three years. I was heading nowhere. I just thought the only way I can make something out of my life is that if I get an education, you know. A loser, some loser getting high all the time. I, mean, I want to make something out of it. Welcome back to the rundown. With us in the studio, we have Hayden Paquin. He is a promoter of such clubs as Dragonfly, Republic, The Highlands, located in Hollywood. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Not bad. So, the first question I'd like to ask you is where, are you, uh, where were you born or around er what area did you grow up in? Well, I was born here in L.A. and down in Redondo Beach, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but my dad was a fishing game warden, so we were, I, when I was five, we moved up to a little ranch town outside of Bakersfield and grew up in the country. Oh, in the country. Um, what, a question I wanted to ask you, um, did you used to go to clubs while growing up? Well, how, growing up, when? Well, um, <laughs> let's just say when you were a teenager, when you were like 16, 17, no, I was six, did you go no. clubbing? No. When Field did parties. You Field parties? Keg parties, yep. Oh, keg parties, okay. So um, in Bakersfield at that time. Tell us, what made you interested in going into the business of clubs promotion? Uh, it kind of was random. I just yeah. fell into it, yeah. Okay. Didn't have any intention of doing it. I just kind of started doing it and started making money, and that's kind of what happened. What was the first club that you've gone to that kind of opened that, you know, opened up your eyes <coughs> in regards to clubs? Well, it kind of went, when I was in Bakersfield, I was going, I, was, I grew up in Glenville. It's a little ranch town outside of Bakersfield, so I'd travel an hour into town to go to high school. And when I was in high school, I would sometimes throw keg parties at friends' houses when their parents was out of town. Those were kind of the first parties, I guess, oh, that really? I ever threw. And then when I was 18, one of my roommates bought a club in Bakersfield mm -hmm. when I was finally living there. So I kind of started throwing like after-hours parties at the clubs and that kind of thing when I was 18 in Bakersfield, but not really knowing what I was doing. And then when I moved down to L.A. when I was 21, I just started helping one of my business partners out and fell into it. And that's kind of that. So it's kind of in a way like uh, you're uh, it born naturally into it pretty much, right? Yeah, I guess but The so. whole idea of the kegs, you know? That, yeah. That's pretty it just kind of happened. It wasn't ever planned out. Tell us about, like, what made you come to Los Angeles, or to Hollywood in particular, to do what <coughs> you do now? Have you ever been to Bakersfield? Bakersfield? Yeah. I've heard the stereotypical things about <laughs> Bakersfield, that there's absolutely nothing there. Well, there's definitely stuff to do if well, you yeah, I mean, make stuff to parties. do, but hey, eventually it gets a little old, and then you yeah, kind of got to move on. And how, how, how is Bakersfield, by the way? Just the it's hot. hot. But in regards to club-wise <laughs> and just the cake parties. Yeah, it's, bas it's more bars than clubs. What made you choose coming to Hollywood as opposed to going to New York or Chicago or any other well, metropolitan area? Long, it's a long ways. It's a big move. Yeah. I just already knew people here in people two hours. I could drive down here. Didn't have to get on a plane to move down here. So um, tell us about uh, your first promotion or how, how you pretty much got into the business and who you talked <coughs> to pretty much, if, if you, know, you can't say it. Well, my first... My first promotion ever would have been in Bakersfield, and it was a night called Penny Beer Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. It's five bucks to get in, and Penny Beers all night. Oh, really? Club Hollywood oh, was the name of this. Okay. First one in LA I started doing, I think, was probably 
Uncle Paws, maybe, back in like 2000. Hmm. Okay. And how did that go? Was it that a success one, right away? Or no. were, were, you, were you like, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that, or maybe I should have planned it better? No, that one wasn't very good. It took a while. It took a couple of years to couple kind of get everything built, databases built and all that. Is there like some sort of a, a okay, you get a certain amount of chances. How many chances did you get to become a promoter as opposed to, you know, like somebody say, oh, you know what, he's not good enough and just drop you. How many chances did you get or did you just hit the nail, you know, hit, hit the nail with the hammer right away when you did that? Well, you always team up with other people also. So, I mean, different people get offered different things, so you get brought in that way. So, I didn't start, I didn't start holding my own contracts probably for like two, three years, so. Is the, is the term, it ain't what you know, but who you know, is that effective when it comes to the promotion? Everything. Okay. <laughs> What's the craziest thing someone has done in order to get inside of your venue? Um, I mean, well, you know, let's best, censor it a little because, you know, this is... I can give you a good story that's pretty okay, uncensored. Go I, do, um, <laughs> <laughs> I do yacht parties every Memorial Day and Labor Day okay. out in Marina Del Rey. And one of the first ones that we did, um, we... Board at three, take off at four. Somebody was coming up from Orange County, um, and on their way up here, they got pulled over on the 405 or smoking, and they didn't make it before we left. So the boat was out. They were up here. They already had their tickets, and they paid some guy to take them out in a dinghy, and they jumped off of the dinghy onto the boat to make it onto the party. Oh, wow. That was pretty impressive. Oh, wow. See? That's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with, with the uh, wacky tobacco, as they call it, they mm -hmm. managed to somehow get it in there and... Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll continue this interview after a short break. We'll be back. Hey, we tried our Don't tell me to calm down. I hate that. Stop acting like an animal. You're in public. I'm, I will knock you into next week. Stop it. No, I'm not going to stop it. That's it. We are leaving like right animal. now. We are leaving right now. Oh. Get up. Stand up. I said it. Oh. I said it. Oh. It's springtime in the forest of the black-tailed deer. The young male is feeling playful. It's time for tag. The female flicks her ears. Her way of saying, catch me if you can. Welcome back once again. We have Hayden Paquin in the studio. Since this is a public access show, we're going to open up some questions. And we have our field reporter out there, Charles Butler, and he's going to give you some questions that people are asking. Charles? I'm over here at Santa Monica College. They even gave me a shirt. We're here to ask people, what would they ask a Hollywood club promoter? What is your lady's name? Sana. Sana? Mary. And Mary, what would you ask? I'd ask them, like, why do they keep us outside waiting and the club is empty inside? Hmm. That that happens a lot of times with door staff is just for uh, it's, that's hopefully in the early part of the night because you always want it to look like there's a bunch of people waiting to get inside. Right. That way people are going to stop. If so somebody pulls up, and they're driving by in their car, and there's nobody out front, they're going to be like, "That oh, this is not happening. Okay. Why are we even going to try to go that's, in there?" Hey, you know what? That's a very very. I never looked at it that way. As a matter of fact, let's go to the next question. Your name, sir? My name is Josh. Josh, what would you ask a nightclub Hollywood promoter? I would ask that particular person, how does he get his music set up? How do you get his music set up? Josh wants to know. Well, they just have to be really good. I mean, for the most part, most of us have kind of a core of DJs that we kind of rotate through. Like, I have three or four that I pretty much go to for the most part all the time, and one of them are usually always available. If not, then that's when you'd start trying outside guys, okay. new guys. Um, is there like certain clubs play certain <coughs> types of music yeah. or do they generalization? No, it's, it, yeah, it's definitely different every time. Some of the dance, like my Sunday night, for instance, is all 80s. That's it. DJ just plays 80s music all night. The other clubs are basically a mix of a little bit of everything. And then the bigger ones, like my Saturday night place at the Highlands, we have five different rooms and five different DJs. So there's a little bit of everything in every room. How do you go as far as handling? Uh, this, how, you have about five clubs under your wing, don't you? <coughs> well, right now I do four weekly four. and then... So How do you go as far as handling that? That's a pretty interesting, you know, uh, good. As far as the DJs or just a being able to maintain? As far as everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's tiresome. It can get to be a lot, but 
is what it is. Work. Everybody has to go to work. That's right. Well, I mean, it's more, I think, in generally, this would be the, the most fun type of work that you would have. I mean, yeah. the better being out there in the club and, and, and going as far as, as being in the club and promoting and being a part of it as opposed to being in an office job in the cubicle and everything, right? Yeah, Very I fun. could agree with that. Now, um, as a matter of fact, we'll get some more questions for you, but first of all, we're going to go into this commercial break. Thank you very much. We'll be back. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. To you, this is a place to make macaroni and cheese. To someone else, it's a way to make a kid sorry for what he did. Preventing child abuse and neglect doesn't just mean reporting it. It means stopping it before it starts. Find out how at preventchildabuse.org or 1-800-CHILDREN. A child is helpless. You are not. And welcome back to The Rundown. Of course, we're going to go back right now to our field reporter, Charles Butler, for a couple of more questions for Mr. Hayden. Your name, sir? I am Bradley Whitlock. Bradley Whitlock. If you were able to meet a Hollywood promoter, what would you want to ask him? I would ask him, why is it so hard to get in the club? Why is it so hard? Do you have trouble getting into the club? Sometimes out here, you know, the bouncers don't be, you look at them, you, they be like, I, I don't know. And then they'll let somebody else in. you like, I was here first, so it's like hard for me to get in. So they want to know, why do y'all pick over other people? Why are you picking over Bradley? It probably depends on which night and which club. Because some are more driven towards numbers and just money, and some are more for the pretty crowds and keeping it more tight. And so some of them, it's like it says in <coughs> casual wear, and some people say like in formal apparel or something like that. Maybe that's well, it's not necessarily even so much. For some nights, it's not necessarily what they're wearing. It's kind of who they're with and how many chicks they have with them. So we have. <laughs> Oh, how many chicks? <laughs> oh, that, hey, that works. Good. Yep. That, that's also a good little... Smaller spots there. always have to have lots of girls. So if I was to, let's just say, I was to go like this to a club, would it be a certain club that I can't enter, of course, <coughs> or is there, do I have to like wear the slacks and the silky shirts or... <laughs> silky shirts? Yes, and, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, the thing is, okay, look, I'm 32 now, and I haven't <laughs> gone clubbing in quite a while. Perhaps I'll get into it again, <laughs> but you know, just, just as a generalization. Would I be able to go into a club with jeans and a shirt like this, like I'm wearing? Um, Depending on which ones, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe. Maybe. Probably depends on how the night was going. <laughs> <laughs> so another question I have for you is... Um, I have door people that tell oh, people they can't people? get I don't have to oh, deal with that. Have you people. ever been a door person yourself? <laughs> no. Well, kind of. I hated it. I did it for like a half a night, and then I had to leave the door. Half a night? Like a, yeah. Wow, that was enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right, like I have another question here. Is uh, what do you do to get more people inside of your club? Um, we'll promote. Promote? Yeah. What are the methods of promotion that you use? Um, not flyers, of course. It's been around forever. Flyers. Street teams, phone calls, emails, mm, text blasts, MySpace, online stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you um, cater to celebrities more than you do for the general public, or...? Personally, not mo most of my nights are not really celebrity driven. They're okay. more of like good time driven. A couple nights here and there are kind of based around that kind of thing, but it's not uh, it's not what I do for the most part. Okay. Hmm. So, what would you say is the greatest package of promotion that you've ever accomplished as of lately? <coughs> What's the biggest 
Truck stop was my favorite one for Truck sure. Stop? Yeah, that's one that I probably will never be able to duplicate or recreate again. It was, uh, we did it like, I think it started back in 2004, mm -hmm. and it was a, uh, we did a club that was based on a middle of nowhere side of the highway redneck strip bar. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, Pap we served Paps Blue Ribbon in a can, had a little, little short guy MC with girls doing strip shows and selling ones and throwing money out. It was, it was really, really fun. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah, especially do that in the middle Hollywood. of nowhere, especially. Yeah, well, it was in the middle of Hollywood, but it had the whole vibe of middle of nowhere. We used to put hay bales out in the club and oh, really? had live chickens and bunny rabbits one night. Even it's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it was fun. I mean, that was one that was like we had everybody from Paris Hilton to Prince come oh, through that place, and they would just kind of freak out. And people it was, can get information in regards to, like behind the scenes stuff in in the website. Well, that's Maybe over. That one's pretty good. That one's. Long well, gone. Long that was like three ago. years ago. But I'm, I'm sure people will look it up in YouTube. They can go as far as finding it. Some unexclusive footage, perhaps, maybe? Possibly. Hmm. Nothing so, that I put up. But oh, right. <laughs> you never know yeah, what people are doing out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, what is your favorite performer that you've had inside of your clubs? Or have you had people perform in your clubs? Yeah. Who was your favorite? My favorite would have, I don't know. Hmm. It's tough. Not really sure, to be honest with you. Let me ask you this question then. Now let's let's reverse the question. Without mentioning any names, um, tell us who has been not not who has been, but what has been the worst celebrity to come to your club. Give me an incident of the worst celebrities come to your club, <laughs> well, if you can, without mentioning any names, or unless you want to, unless you don't, whatever. Yeah. One of the really worst not. incidents in your club regarding well, a celebrity. Sometimes they. Uh, they ask for a whole lot and don't really do anything. Like we've had some really big names come in and like take over whole entire sections and say they're going to buy bottles, spend five grand or whatever, and then they bought a couple bottles of water and left after <laughs> half an hour, and we had to clear out the whole rooms for them, and that can be a little annoying. That's happened from time to time. If TMZ was to come up to you and give you, inf uh, give you questions about who is the worst tippers, would you go as far as doing that? Would you quote unquote rat them out like that? TMZ. TMZ. My, no, not what a fan. You? Not a fan of that show so right. much. Well, what about a paparazzi in general? They give you a certain amount of money. Would you, would you tell people who are the worst tippers? Because that's what they're doing now, a lot of clubs. I'm not, I'm not, not you guys, but from what I've heard, they have special reporters coming in, getting them paid extra amount of money to give that information out. How much? Like from what I heard, anything from a segment would be like one to two thousand dollars to give out no, names. That's, no, <laughs> it's probably those clubs aren't making it as, as well as yours. I, you focus I more guess on the so. I don't know. Those, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a whole. That's a funny industry that I'm not really, uh, not really filled in on. Well, so if there was a guy from TMZ that wanted to speak to you directly, you would just avoid him completely. Yeah, because I'm sure there'd be some kind of silly backstory behind it. Now, another question I have for you, um, this is our final question because I think we're running out of time here. Where can people access information or get online to <coughs> know about the venues and uh, who are the performers and everything for your clubs? Um, well you, you can get, name them all if you want. Yeah, to, you know? updates. Everything's usually on my website. It's packproductions.com. P-A-C-Q is the pack spelling. Okay. Um, there's also MySpace, same thing, slash Pack Productions. Pack Productions. And it's, uh, right now the current weeklies are Wednesdays at Opera and Crimson. Mm -hmm. Thursdays at Central that starts this Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, Saturdays at the Highlands. And Sundays, Spasmatics at Dragonfly. Okay. That's the information that you can go as far as getting from him. Thank you, Hayden, for coming to the show and for giving us an in-depth look at what promoters and what it's like to run a club, of course. Uh, stay tuned for our show as it continues. We'll be right back after this break. Tarzan, lord of the jungle, king of the apes, father of boy. He knows what it takes to be a dad. You go for a ride, you take a swim, you hang out. All it takes is time. Hey, it doesn't take a hero, but it takes a man to be a dad. These kids are in trouble. They have a problem learning, and their parents are waiting too long before getting them help. Don't wait. The sooner you get help, the better the chance your kid has. I, I think you should wear a tie. Dad, nobody wears ties to school. Tie.
Says you're serious, it'll make a good impression. And remember, you're there to, to make something of myself. Almost half of all UNCF students are the first in their family to go to college. And I'd make sure that I got my Dad, lunch. Dad, you're not going. I am. I know. And when you're the first to go, you're going for a lot of people. The United Negro College Fund, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome back, and unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for the rundown. I'd like to thank our guest, Hayden Paquin. Thank you. For coming to the show. Of course, before you go, tell us a little one more time <coughs> as to where we can get information about the clubs. Um, everything's updated online on my website, packproductions.com. And also the MySpace page has everything, MySpace slash Pack Production. I'm your host, Mauro Rosales Jr., and we'll see you next time on The Rundown. In order to give credit where credit is due, I'm going to introduce you to the people who have done behind-the-scenes work on The Rundown. Very first question we have here, what is your name, sir? Hockey, sir. Okay, what did you do for the show? Everything. Everything. Give me yes. an example. Um, camera guy, producer, director, you know what I'm saying? Did the whole night. One man show, you know. Right. Next person, next person, come on down, please. Who, uh, and what did you do for the rundown? Nothing. Next person. I don't know. What, 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 what were you written down in the credits for? Come on. Oh, I don't know. I was like an interview. Oh, a technical sport. Yeah, that's yes. I did the PSA, sort of. So if you enjoy a coffee while you were waiting, that's her. Next person, over here. What did you do for the show? Uh, I, I can't talk because the media is looking for me. Oh, the, the immigration is looking for her. INS. She lives. I, I'll give you her phone number. INS people. <laughs> you over here, sir. What did you do for the show? Got some donuts for the director. Um, passed the vacuum in the set. Did some graphics, some editing, music. Uh, make sure everyone's there on time with their clothes on because for some reason Charles came in one time with his boxers. I don't know why. Boxers, Charles. It happens, I guess, you know, the entertainment business allows press for a lot of time and sometimes we don't sleep a lot. So do you believe in the casting couch when it comes to Charles? No comment on that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Have a good one. And now the man, of course, who is the director of the show, Charles Butler, a.k.a. HNIC. Have a nice Hanukkah? No. Head Negro in charge. Head Negro in charge. And of course me, I don't even have to introduce myself. You know who What about you? I, I'm shy, I'm a philosopher, and I believe donuts taste good after breakfast. And I'm extremely hot. I'm going to be the, uh, the, the new spokesperson for uh, Calvin Klein, the fat division. Okay, one more time, one more time, one more time. <laughs> exactly. Here we go, Ray. Thanks for seeing the show. Goodbye. Thank you for seeing the show. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That sounded crappy. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, you know what? Bye. place to hang a coat to someone else it's a place to teach a child a lesson you'll never forget preventing child abuse and neglect doesn't just mean reporting it it means stopping it before it starts find out how at preventchildabuse.org or 1-800-CHILDREN a child is helpless you are not it's commonly found in the transverse segment of the colon with vascular congestion and smooth hey, surface. Typically, the biopsy proved to be a tubulo villus adenoma. It's a it's polyp! Why doesn't he just come right out and say it? It's a polyp. Sir, do you mind? Look at your textbook. Could I see that point of... We got one. Stopping colon cancer is simple. Get the polyp early and stop colon cancer before it even starts. Wait, 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 wait. Just get the test. I need the credits. Get the polyp. Attica! Oh, shut up! Get the cure. Uh, Mrs. DeBruzzo, I'm Ed McMahon, and we're signing up You're people for... Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah.
<laughs> Mr. Murphy, Ed McMahon. Uh, we're starting up. No, 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 no. Dreams no. really do come it, true. Oh, but it's dinero, dinero. No, no, no. no yes, Ed McMahon, see. Ed McMahon. Yes, Ed McMahon. We're having our first Ed ever. Ed McMahon. Yes. Tuesday night at the high school. Uh, we're starting up the uh, neighborhood watch in this area, and here's all the information. Uh, Stevie, get down here, please. Oh, he's just here. It's just, it's Five, just... six, seven, eight. No tango to now. Neighborhood watch. We're having this neighborhood watch, the first one. Right. Daddy, put some pants on. I'll, I'll come back. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Start a neighborhood watch. It's just one of the many ways you can help make America stronger. To find out how, call or log on for this free guide.